Let me actually, I've got the recording on, so I have started the recording. This is our lecture for Design 320. It's Thursday, January 28th, and we're in a live meet. So, excuse me just a moment. Okay, so, um, let's go over a few things. I want to uh, talk about detailed sketches, and we're going to talk about uh, what those might look like and where they go on your presentation. Sort of what goes where on the presentation, okay? So, <clears throat> we'll be looking at that a little bit. And I put that in the wrong spot, but that's okay. I'll get things moved around. I do want to let you know that um, I got the demonstrations that we did in the lab yesterday. I have those up. Uh, I, I had forgotten to do that yesterday, so I just put them up a little while ago. So you're welcome to look at those and get just a little bit more information about tracing with AutoCAD and perspective lines in AutoCAD. I'm going to do AutoCAD again today. Just know that it kind of works the same way in SketchUp. <clears throat> Don't really care which one you're using. Remember that we have stuff due. It's um, going to be due on the 31st. Okay, and here's a little kind of a little thing about it and here is sketching materials and here's actually the template okay so there's all that stuff bink 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 so let's get back into here and take a look and see um about making details in your sketches and then i'll open it up for questions okay so here we go. Um, first of all, in your uh, template, remember you need your name and your WID number. And here, um, some people have go, okay, I really still don't get what the visualization of my work is. Well, if you want to think about it, you're going to write your deliverables over here. And your deliverables are going to be 2.2.1, 2.3.1, 2.4.1, 2.5.1, so on and so forth. And so visualizations of your work should show your deliverables. Now, that doesn't mean you need to put a whole copy of it up there. Maybe you want to. Maybe you want to go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a snip. Oh, I want to keep that a snip of everything I've put in here or a snip of my whole thing. But maybe you, you, you should have probably out of each deliverable that you list, which are these pages here, you're going to put an image. So hopefully that helps you figure out um, how, that, how that one works. So the one I want to look at here is show a detailed version of your one point perspective sketch and I, and it should be one that we've put in class so i'm going to show it to you there there's there's my woolworth building and that took me about 25 or 30 minutes and and i know autocad fairly well and so maybe it would take you an hour or two hours or three. I don't know. So it depends on how much detail you want. But let's talk about some of the details. Okay. First of all, I put it in a view style called Sketchy. To do that, I type view style. Enter. And then the view styles all come. Uh, Drafty, uh, that didn't work. Uh, I, I got view standard. I want view style. I don't know why view style isn't coming up. 
Well, now I got to go find that. I know that's what it's called, so I have to go find that command. Um, that's interesting that that didn't come up. Not even seeing it here. Oh, there it is down at the bottom. Oh, visual style. That's what it is. I'm going to change that. Visual style. See, it's a good thing I go through this stuff. Visual style. So I want to write up here. Visual styles. There it is. Visual styles. And I made my visual style look sketchy. Okay. So that's what I want to do. I want to do my visual styles sketchy. And then when I'm drawing, it gives me these little kind of sketchy looking little lines. Kind of neato, makes it look like I'm sketching. So you can see what I did here. These were my perspective lines. Those were pretty much the perspective lines that I worked with. And then from my perspective lines, actually I can turn them on probably. Nope, this one doesn't have them. From my perspective lines, I just did a wall or something and I just drew over it to make it look cool. And then I noticed that I got rid of my perspective lines so I could see where things were. And look, it looks kind of sketchy. Now these little symbols here, indicate a window that's how you indicate a window okay and then down here i broke my line and i could use something called if you know autocad you can use the trim command and trim it so your doorways look just a little bit better that one won't do it because my line doesn't go past it. Let me make the line go past it. There we go. And so now it just looks a little more clear that those are recessed doors and that there's some sort of a wall. And I showed kind of a recess on this window. It's not quite right. Because, you know, but it's only a sketch, so that's okay. So this would be considered a detailed sketch. I did more than just put in the perspective lines. When you look at it, you sort of have a better idea that it's, uh, that it's uh, the front of a building. And it's a one-point perspective. And I can see I've got kind of a sidewalk and one, two, three, four doors. Each door has some sort of little door handle. They're recessed. There's some windows by each door. Um, you know, just kind of cool. This has some sort of little grill that I saw. I could get rid of this line. That line doesn't really do me much. Probably makes things more confusing looking. So there we go. That's That would be a detailed sketch and again it wasn't too much it was mostly just up and down lines drawn across and then a couple of little lines to show an inset and if you watched which i know you did the um one and two point perspective videos you learned about how to make little doors that are inset and things like that so then i would take my snip make a copy and put that here. And then it says that I'm supposed to write something about it. So I'd put here something about the Woolworth building. And since this was in red, I might even write in red. And I'll make it a little smaller.
Now I can make it a little smaller. Sight of the first lunch counter sit in that was part of the civil rights movement in 19... something like that. It maybe spell things correctly. That would be a good thing. So that would be plenty, but if you wanted to put more in, that would be cool. And look, I probably... It would be cool if this was at two-thirds, one-third. And so I'm going to just kind of... That's taking up about two-thirds. And so I'd like this to take up about one-third of my page. So I might need to do some more writing. And where's my transparent? There we go. And probably make that red also. There we go. So that's how I might set this one up. I remember that I that two-thirds, one-third thing was pretty cool. And that lets me know about how much I want to write here. Because that looks, it's taken up the right amount, but it looks a little bit empty. Looks like I didn't quite know. Now, I can't get to that because this is in the front. So I need to send that the back now i can start writing more there we go and that'll make a nice portfolio page for you okay does that make sense and then for the two point you would do kind of the same thing and um i don't think i saved my 2.1. Let me see if I've got a two point here. No, I don't I don't have a two point one real handy. Um but I could I could make one and maybe I'll do that for you um a little bit later. Okay? Now Sorry, I'm flicking back and forth between too many things. So my expectation is that you would spend maybe an hour, hour and a half on your sketches. Uh, very quick on doing your perspective lines. Because once you got it down, you know, it doesn't take very long. So maybe an hour to do maybe all the ones that I gave you to just draw the perspective lines. But this one, you could take one of these one point ones, whoops, one of the one point rough outs and do a bunch more work on it and really make it as nice a looking as a perspective view as you can. And maybe spend an hour fixing this up to make it as good as you can be, and then maybe another hour on your 2.1, okay? That's sort of how I see the workload according to my expectations for you. Now, maybe you can get them done quicker. Maybe they'll take a little bit longer. If it takes you too long, then just do the minimum amount of work, okay? Anybody have any questions on what that might look like. Oh, and then I need to make sure that I let people know that that was my own work. So cool. So Janice, do you have a question? Anybody have any questions? You can do a raise hand or you can just pipe in with it. Okay. Yeah, Jake.
Well, that's great that you know what I want to teach. I'm teaching what I want to teach, Jake. We're doing fine. Cool, but thank you for your input. Okay. That's very cool. Okay, so um, two-point perspective, same thing. So what, what I want to do now is um, do another AutoCAD thing so that you can see just a little bit more. If you're interested in doing just a little bit more. And by the way, Jake, I didn't trace this. I made it from my perspective lines that I, that I drew. So you can do it that way if you would like to. Um, I just looked at the picture and kind of drew this in. But let me show you a few more things that you might want to do on this to learn how some of the commands. And we're going to go over these commands later on. So if you don't know them, that's okay. But if you do know some of these commands, then that's, then that's kind of cool. So the first command is trim. So if you remember from the drawing, there was kind of like some shape up here, and then there was a little break right here. And then a shape and a break. And a shape and a break. Okay, so I want to show you how to do that break. And there's two ways you can do it. The first is with the trim command. Right up there. You can type trim or you can hit the button or TR. And then highlight all the stuff around what you want to trim. So I highlighted all the stuff that was around there. And I did the highlight from the lower right to the upper left. Because that catches all the things that are inside the box or touch the box. So trim, highlight things. And then you hit enter because it's asking me still up here to select more objects. So I'm done selecting enter. Now, when I touch something, do I want to get rid of that? Yeah. So I can press my, my left click. And if I want to get rid of that, I can press it. Oh, no, I don't want that. I don't want to get rid of that. Oh, and look, that one got rid of too much. So I can go back in and go, oh, I didn't want to get rid of all that. Put that line back in there. Sometimes you get rid of too much. You get rid of too much, just draw it back in. Okay, so I'm going to draw it back in. Draw it back in. And see how I didn't make everything perfect? That's okay in a sketch. So now I want to do the same thing on this little part and this little part. Now, in SketchUp, you would just run the eraser right past that little part because that's the default in SketchUp is it erases everything between two lines. But that's not AutoCAD. AutoCAD is a trim command. Start in the lower right, click. Let go, upper left, enter, click, click. And oh, I got rid of too much again. That's okay. It doesn't, doesn't hurt. Let's go draw it back in. This one I'm going to take care of ahead of time. It needs, to, well, this one I'll do a different way just to show you. So now maybe I want to break this thing here there's something called a break command right here and i'm gonna break that line right there and see how that became two lines and i can do it again i can break this line right there and now that part i can delete so that's two ways that you can use to kind of control AutoCAD.
Okay, you can use the trim command or the break command. Now, if you want these to show a little bit of depth, you can make them show a little bit of depth. You can add a little bit more to it. If you want. You know, that adds just a, and you, you really can't see it in the sketch, and it's kind of, but that's just fine like that. Okay? So that's how you add the details. Now, let me show you how to make these squiggle lines. That thing's called a spline. Let's see if I have my spline. There's something called a spline. And if you click the spline button, and just go click, 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 enter. It makes a wiggly line. Isn't that cool. So then anytime I want to make those wiggly lines, click, 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 click. And you can just practice doing that all over the place. But there's a copy command. In AutoCAD. And we're going to go over this a lot in a few weeks. So don't freak out if you're going, ah, I don't understand any of this. It's okay. Don't do it. But I can copy those things and click somewhere and literally just go place them wherever I want. And of course, I'm making too many of them, but that's how you do it. So there's things like trim and copy and spline and draw and the arc command, the two-point arc command. But that's how you make a one-point perspective in AutoCAD. And you can see down here, I didn't do all of my trimming. Still looks okay. Looks pretty good. What do I do if I want to change the colors? Okay, to change the colors, I can right-click and do the properties and just change the color. Uh, there's black. There's yellow. Ugh, green. Blue. Blue. Magenta. Black and white. Or I can go to a color. It really is, isn't it? Okay. Or I can go to true colors or color books so your choice how to do that okay red looks good for sketching it's kind of easy visual style sketchy there we go kind of looks like i did a sketch but i i did it in autocad so i'm going to do a save on that save early and often and if you want to update this as you go, that's great. But this is this is more than enough. You don't even need you don't even need this stuff. I was just showing that there were some kind of poster boards written on the wall in that thing. You don't even need the doorknobs or the poster boards. You don't need these things on the windows. This is kind of nice to show that the window is inset just a little bit it would be nice maybe to get rid of this so that it looks like it's going across you don't need the text okay i put it on put something on there cool okay any questions about what goes on this page Okay, then the next one is what goes on the two-point perspective page. And I had done this all in VMware, and it's somewhere else, I think. I have my two-point perspective, perspective, perspective. I don't think I have my... Let's see if it's on here. No, those are all one-point are all my one point perspectives
don't think I've got it. Okay, so let me see if I've got my two-point perspective. Now I have to go download those too. I work in so many places that sometimes it's hard to find um, all of my stuff. So let me go, just so that you can see a two-point perspective get done. I need to go here. I need to go back here. And I need to go to my sketching materials. Two point. See, I did it and I have it in SketchUp. I'm going to take, um, okay, I'll take a quick vote on the chat line. Do you want to see Kay's house? Kay's house or do you want to see General Vallejo? Vallejo. And actually, you're wrong. So that's okay, though. It's okay to be wrong sometimes. Um, okay, we'll go ahead and do that one. And we'll go to uh, download. And bring up my AutoCAD. And I'm going to put it in the same drawing. And now I'm just going to move it out of the way. So here's where you get to do both tracing and making your own thing. So there's a perspective view of a building. So let me make it big enough. And I'm going to do it kind of fast. And I'm going to set the properties to transparency 80%. That looks good. I'm going to keep drawing on here. Well, let me put my perspective lines in really quick. It's near Land Park. I'm not going to show those because those are going to get covered up. And then in the other direction, I've got and so I'll do the fillet command. Hopefully they come out pretty close. Bring that point. So those are going to be my perspective lines. And I start with the corner of the house. And then the idea is I want to be able to, to and I'm just going to quickly trace here so that somebody knows that this is a house. You're going to see why I need the perspective lines in a bit. Yep. Okay, there we go. So that's got that side of that. And then I'm just going to do something really quick right up here. Bing. Bing. And the idea is that the carport. The carport is supposed to be lower than these windows and higher than these windows. And it's supposed to look sort of like, uh, you know what a widow's porch is. Um, it's, it's sort of a spot where 
the old whaling wives would go out and watch for their guys to come home and it would have a rail around it. So that's what it's supposed to look like. So now, I'm going to have to pick a height and I know that everything that's in this front line is going to have to draw back to this point. So the front of my carport and I'm going to do it on my, I'm going to start drawing my carport now. The front of my carport has to extend along that line at least past the car. So there's the front of my carport. Okay. And then the side of my carport has to go back down along that line. So I'm going to put my perspective back in. So I have to make the other part of my car, whoops, the other side of my carport has to go here till it gets past the car. Well, past the car is going to be, like if I do that line, it's somewhere around there. So that's going to be kind of like the stick figure frame of my carport. But then I know that the front of my carport is going to have to come down a little bit. So that's going to sort of be the front face of my carport. So then I can come down here and follow my perspective lines to get that one. And here comes the tricky part. How do I make this post? Well, I'm going to make it an easy way. I'm not going to be too particular about it. And this one, I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to say I see the front edge of it. And I probably kind of see back here, I kind of see the bottom of this. There we go. So that's sort of, now, I have to see the bottom of this. So I'm going to need another perspective line. And I did it in the wrong spot. That's going to be where my carport attaches to the house. But where is it going to come back and hit that? Well, that I have to find by this line. Isn't that weird? That's the bottom of my carport. And then usually it doesn't just sort of attach onto the wall. It it attaches on with some sort of a board, right? So you're going to draw kind of a board there and get rid of a few of the parts. So now I've got two posts, and this is called a ledger. And it's starting to take shape. Okay, and, and you can get rid of the tree or... I lost my drawing. No, I just turned off my perspective line with the little... A little clicky thing there. 
Okay? Because I wanted to show that. Now, how much more do you want to put on there? Whoop. Back to where I was. There we go. So that would be enough to show, but it said it wanted some more detail. So I'm going to go ahead and draw kind of this. to show to show that this is sort of a little fence up here. And I'm not taking great care. I'm not making sure that they're three inches apart, right? So that kids can't fall through the middle of it. Now, how is this one going to I see. And you don't have to go this back and forth between these walls. And I'm going to go up to there, over. So that just lets the planning department know that you're going to put something up there, and you could add notes to it for planning that says, don't worry. And I'm not even going to put the one in the back because it'll just make it look messy. Okay, and they're going to know that this tree isn't really there and all that kind of stuff. Or I could get rid of that and go, okay, that's what it's going to look like. That's, that's what my thing is going to look like. And now watch. This is really cool. I want certain things to turn red. So if I just click all those things that are supposed to turn red i'm just clicking them i can go up to this layer thing and say turn those red and all of a sudden they're red it's so cool So some of you don't know enough AutoCAD to make this useful. You go, oh, that's way too much work. Perfectly fine. Don't do it. Okay? Just kind of go at it a little bit. There we go. But if you know, so there we go. And then I think there's some sort of a, a wall over here. There's probably a roof. I'll draw, I'll draw some sort of a roof. I don't even know if it's right. But I, I there I just I just drew a roof. Let's see. I think I erased the image. Um I know it's some sort of a hip roof. This probably comes back over to um This probably comes back over to here. This is probably over here. I don't remember. I haven't drawn this for quite a while. Okay. And then, voila. Oop. Images. There. And you can add some more stuff in, right? Because you know that it has to have a, a bottom to it. You have some sort of a wall back here. Probably you want to draw a driveway of some sort. But the idea is that they know that you're just going to be putting a thing on the corner. And so quickly, that took me about 15, 20 minutes, uh, not even that much. Uh, you have your quick sketch to start talking about. Now you can add, if you want to, those details that um, are going to be asked for. So I'm going to show you you don't have to do this part but this is how this is how you would add um
There's your existing structure. This is new carport. This would say something like um, four by four minimum supports. Um, redwood. Something like that. You would say um, maybe you want that to be um, iron railing three inch on center per safety standards. Um, you'd probably do something like um, um, non-structural covering. Rain barrier only. So people know you're not going to walk around up there. Eighteen foot wide for two cars leaves five feet to neighbor. Right? So these are the things that the planning department wants to know about. They don't really care what you're gonna do or how big it is or how tall it is, or they wanna know that you're putting a new carport on an existing str oh and then uh, probably need something of ledger by architectural engineer. Just so that they know that somebody's going to do a calculation on that so that they know that everything is going to be okay. So that's how you use a sketch in architecture. And believe it or not, this would get you with half an hour's worth of work right through the planning department. Okay, there you would have some more questions. You would also need to know um, where's my text height? Building cost estimate three thousand. You would say who the contractor is, who the owner. So these are the types of things that you learn about as you go through the program as to what does it do to um, that. What does it do so that you can get a building done? There's more than just drawing it. There's more than just figuring out how big it is. Uh, there's lots of just little items. Okay, They want to know what's new. They want to know about the supports. You might put um, Um, maybe you're going to have three of them or four of them. 20 feet is a long way to go. So they might want you to put an extra one in, right? With the ledger, that does a lot of good because that gives you support all the way along. You might even say what size these are going to be two by six joist. So, so that's that lets them know. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. So very quickly, you can give the design intent, and they could look up that joist size, and this size, and this size, and this size out of their book, and go, yeah, that's going to be plenty strong. No problem. 
but it doesn't tell me they want to come back and go, okay, I want to know how many joists you're going to put under here. And so they'd make you come back. It says, you forgot something. Oh, you're right. Fortunately, I only spent half an hour. And all I have to do is turn in this one thing. And I could even do it with a note. Joyce. 16 inch on center. There. Huh. And maybe the joists, I'll give it a size. Maybe I'll go two by four joists. Oop. I don't know why I'm messing that up. And they go, got it. Yeah, you're approved. Does that make sense for everybody? This then would be your, your uh, two-point perspective detail. And I would like to see your lines stay on there. Okay, so this is what I would put. Uh, and you don't need all these notes. You absolutely don't need all the notes. You could just show this. That you've got some details there. But I'm going to show you my other one instead. I'm going to change that color so that it's white. So I don't see it. little bit cleaner looking so I'm gonna take a snip of that now this is really I'm not expecting you to know all this stuff so it would be hard but some of you have had design 330 or design 302 or design 301 and you sort of know about how to do some of this stuff and so now you do need to know a little bit about this right But you could write, you could easily write about this. Give the planning department the information that they need in order to prove the project. To do it very quickly. So you would write something like that. And I've got a nice layout. It's about two thirds, one third. It kind of shows everything. It shows that I did a two point perspective. Uh, it was one of the images. You don't have to add all this stuff. You may wish to, but you don't have to. Oh, and then remember that you want to make sure that I know that that was your work. Woo! That was a bunch of stuff. Anybody got questions on that? So you can see, the, I hope, the value of sketching. That took me less than half an hour. Uh, and really and truly, this is what most contractors would be able to take 
to the city planning department or the county or the or the community and uh plot how much money if if i if if the contractor says yeah i'm going to charge him 3000 bucks for this how much uh so uh jan says we need to include the perspective lines in our sketch i prefer it um I'm going to see them over here, so that's okay. But since this is all about perspective, it's nice for people to be able to see it. Um, anybody know, like, if you did took this to the city of Sacramento, uh, where Land Park is part of, how much they would charge just for your permit? Anybody do that kind of work? Okay, it's usually seven to ten percent for a real simple um, plan check that's just an addition. Okay, now since it says here that the ledger by architectural engineer, I would need to have that calculation available to show that they could see that an architectural engineer had done it. Okay, if you get more than that and they go, okay, we're going to need three plan checks. They charge you like between 500 to 1,000 bucks for a plan check and it can go up from there. But a very simple job like this, they're going to charge 10% and they, 7 to 10%. And they know if you said, oh, I'm getting this job for 500 bucks, you're, they're going to go, no, you're not. No licensed contractor that will do it for that. Anybody know what value of job um, the state requires you to have a licensed contractor for? Okay, anything over $500, unless you assume the responsibility as the contractor and you're just hiring people. Watch out if you do that. Somebody cuts a cable or a gas line or ruins something, you, as the general contractor, are responsible. You will have to pay. So even if you're just taking out a tree or putting in a fence, if it's going to cost more than $500, you are responsible. And if that fence person happens to hit a gas line and they aren't a licensed bonded contractor, you just paid for it. Oh, man. Booger. So be careful about those things. Those are some of the things that we try to teach you in this class or in, in our program. You know, a little bit about the process as well. Okay. Woo! Let's see if I went through what I wanted to go through. Detailed sketches. Yes. What do you know? Does that give you enough now? Does everybody feel comfortable that uh, you have enough information to make it through everything here? I've done a, a thing on that on tracing, a thing on rough out, and now I've done a thing on details. Slide seven. Uh, oh, okay, so Olivia, you have a question on slide seven. No, I'll put this one back in here. So the best thing to do is just recopy this one into your, um, into yours. Right, just go back to the original. Get rid of this one and go to your original and recopy it in. That's the easiest. If in yours, because you did it and it looked like that, I'm fine with that. It's okay, right? Yeah, we, we know what it is. So if yours ends up looking like this, because you can't, you know, it's like, really? Do I really have to go through 
you know, opening up this other one. Um, opening up that one. Right click. Copy. Right click. Paste. Get rid of this one. Because that, you know, that's some work. You got to go through it. But that's what I would suggest. Copy and paste the whole slide. And I'll have this lecture on here. Ooh, I think I have a few meetings to like 3 or 3.30. Uh, but sometime this evening, I'll get this lecture posted on to here. Put in the second slot. That's what I'm... So what are you supposed to put in this one? It's the lecture that I'm doing right now. <laughs> so, so you can't, yeah. Oh, this one right here. Okay. So let me show you. Did you get a chance to look at this one? So I, I made a little video to kind of show what goes in there. What? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> ah, darn. So, so that one. So basically, though, I'll just give you a real quick synopsis of it. Your deliverables are listed over here, right? So you would put some sort of image from each deliverable in this square. How does that sound? Does that matter of fact I can I can write that down and it'll be even better. Okay. Try to put at least one image from each deliverable. That would be more clear, wouldn't it? What? No, I will. It, no, so your deliverables are the things that you have to submit. So let's take a look at work is due. Each one of these is a deliverable. Everything that I list individually is a deliverable. So out of your template, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six pages. Okay, so you would want something off of each page. Well, obviously, you don't need anything off of your weekly summary page because that is the page, right? So these are what we call deliverables. You have to deliver something on each one of these pages. And so we're starting to train you to use words that are used in architectural, manufacturing, all sorts of industries use these words. So something off of each of those. So when you come here, it's not a list of what you did. It's the deliverable. So let's say so you haven't really started yet, but you're going to do 2.2.1 today and 2.2.2 today. And tomorrow you're going to, you'll, you'll do a little bit more scale. You'll do your detail, 2.3.1. And then you just happen to be a weekend worker maybe, 2.4.1 comma 2.5.1 and you're going to do your participation cert later so let's say that's how it works out for you okay then each one of these you would go to that page and put a snip in i should have done that on my one that over here okay so what I would do is I'd take that snip because I really like it and I'd put it over here 
It's not very big and it's not very, and I could even label it if I wanted to. And I could even think about how do I want to show this. Maybe I want, this was a really good question. Thank you for asking it. Maybe I want to show my tracings and my perspective lines, but they weren't really fancy and wasn't really a lot to it. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of, so I'll put some tracings here and some perspective lines here, and then I'll make these two a little bit bigger. And I'll just write down here that these are my detailed sketches. So that might be what it looks like, where I took something from here. Now, you don't have to have all this stuff, okay? But it's kind of nice. Or you could even call this one 2.1, 2.2.1. You could call this 2.3.1. You could call this 2.4.1. And 2.5.1. You don't have to do these. But when you're trying to demonstrate that you knew what you were doing, that's kind of a cool thing. All right. That was an excellent question. Thank you for that. I'm going to turn off the recording.